What if I were to tell you that Nintendo is immensely caring about next generation AAA games coming to Nintendo's platforms, including Switch, but also including whatever they have coming next. And they're caring in a way that we haven't seen them really care about in a long time and that they actually provided data to back up why they should be caring. Pretty interesting. Oh, by the way, a game that I guess I've known for a while is coming to Switch was finally confirmed and Sonic Frontiers gets a demo? What? Yeah, let's just dive right into the news. And we're going to start with Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. So the games were rated last week. Now they've been officially announced. And there's been some collector's editions, and there'll be a physical version. But it's very strange. So Square Enix confirms that Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters is coming to Switch in the spring. They're basically saying that there's going to be a collector's and physical edition. And pleased to learn that both of those are coming. The luxurious Final Fantasy 1 through 6 Pixel Remaster, or the Final Fantasy 35th anniversary edition, as they seem to be calling it, and Final Fantasy 1 through 6 collection, both containing all six games. The digital editions of Final Fantasy Pistol Remasters will be available to purchase individually or as a bundle on the Nintendo Switch eShop. So you can just buy one game or you can buy the whole bundle for, I think, probably $75. The physical editions of Final Fantasy Pistol Remasters are also available to pre order on the Square Enix store. The Final Fantasy 1 through 6 Pixel Remaster, Final Fantasy 35th Anniversary Edition, what a mouthful, is a true celebration of the series featuring some awesome extras, including the entire 1 through 6 collection, which includes a physical collection of all games for either PlayStation 4 or Nintendo Switch, an Anniversary Edition goods box, a bonus lenticular sleeve for the game package, a two-disc vinyl record set featuring newly arranged game music with exclusive cover artwork by Kazuka Shibuya, a specially compiled art book showcasing beautiful character pixel art, and eight stylized pixel art character figures in a window package. This is gonna be about $250 for this, but what really has people upset right now is while there will be a physical version for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 of just the standard six games, and yeah, it's $75, it's limited in quantities. In fact, they warn it's limited in quantities. This is to the point where you should really just have the collector's edition and probably not even say you're selling a physical copy because you're not really doing it. You're making the physical edition a collector's item. And that's just stupid. It, there's nothing, you don't get anything extra by buying the physical copy. You just get all six games on a cartridge, all six games on a disc. I don't understand what the point of this is other than money, but then they make more money off the digital copy. I Look, I understand if they wanted to make the physical edition exclusive to the collector's thing, fine, whatever. Then it's a collector's item, but a standalone physical version of Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters should not be a collector's item. That's just stupid. We get more runs of games from limited run games than we're getting from this from Square. In fact, it's already sold out. It was sold out literally within seconds of it becoming available. It's kind of insane, but you know what? Square Enix is going to do what Square Enix does. I guess the bigger news is that we're getting the games at all, and they're coming in spring. We don't have an exact release date yet, but I'm sure one will be coming at a future Nintendo Direct. Next up, we're going to talk about Nintendo really caring about AAA third-party games coming to Switch. Now, for some context to this, Nintendo has a lot of reason to care about this, not just because that you want to add diversity to your portfolio or you're worried about Activision Blizzard or Ubisoft or EA or other companies deciding not to support your future platforms, but because sales data is showing Nintendo should care. In a prior financial report, Nintendo put out there that over 50% of their game sales are now coming from third-party offerings. This includes obviously indie games and AAA. This is important because for a long time, Nintendo's own games were the primary sales point, not just on Switch, but on previous platforms. But now third-party games are starting to gain momentum, which by the way, is a good thing. Diversity of sales is good. It means that Switch has such a wide 
audience of players that care about a lot more than just Nintendo games today. So, that being said, it would make sense for Nintendo to want to be able to lock in future deals, and they made a hire that's specifically about this. So Nintendo hired someone away from Sony, God of War's gameplay producer. So the gameplay producer on God of War Ragnarok has been hired by Nintendo to handle third-party relations. Hannah Fowell announces herself on Twitter, stating the following upon being hired, I am so beyond thrilled to join the third-party team at Nintendo of America to drive developer and publisher relationships. I can't wait to get started working with AAA developers to put exciting new experiences in players' hands. Note that last line, I can't wait to work with AAA developers. Nintendo hired this person because of their experience in the AAA industry, their experience at Sony, and hopefully the relationships they have fostered across the whole industry as the producer of the gameplay for the God of War series to bring AAA games over to Nintendo Switch and future Nintendo platforms. Obviously, when we're focusing on AAA, a lot of that at this point would be next-gen experiences, at least next-gen for Nintendo, maybe current-gen for PlayStation and Xbox, but this is awesome, and I'm glad that Nintendo is showing that they care about their relationship with these companies, getting somebody in who has a good reputation with these companies, and can hopefully convince them to support Nintendo's future platform. I think that this is a big get for Nintendo. Is their talents being wasted by not making games and instead focusing on third-party relationships? I don't know, because I don't know how connected this person is. Maybe they'll be even better at this job than they were at being a gameplay producer. But either way, it is a hell of a talent for Nintendo of America to nab, and I don't think that this is going to do anything other than make us get even more third-party games, especially from the AAA side, in the future on Nintendo platforms. And lastly, I just want to mention that Sonic Frontiers is finally getting a demo on Nintendo Switch. I say finally because technically there already is a demo in Japan. So you can load up your Japanese Nintendo Switch accounts because Switch is region free and go download the demo right now to try out Sonic Frontiers. But it's going to be dropping pretty much any day now, we presume, here in the United States and Europe. So yeah, if you wanted to try out Sonic Frontiers before buying it, if you're not convinced, there's been some price reductions, this and that. It sold 2.5 million, has generally positive reception from players, but the Switch version is considered the worst of all versions. But yet, yeah, most people that play it still end up having fun, like me. So I don't know, why don't you guys go check out and see if the demo's available for you right now. If not, you can go get the Japanese version if you want to just try out Sonic Frontiers. I just wanted to bring this up because, to me, it is important to remember this is also one of those AAA third-party games. Uh, and supporting them on Switch, I think, is important. Although, Sega, they've kind of been a pretty decent supporter of you know, Nintendo as is, so I'm not too worried about them, but still, hey, I found it to be pretty fun on Switch. Let me know if you did as well. Anyways, guys, I am Nathaniel Rumpel Jans from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the content, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe. We are on our road to 80,000 subscribers, so go ahead and, and get that sub in. We might hit 80K this week at the rate things are going. Uh, we, we, we seem to be trending upwards lately, so thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, you're really making me smile before the holidays, so thank you guys.